Hi everyone. This week I have several content notes just to be sure that everyone's on the same page, um, particularly relevant to last week. So remember that when we're talking about these things, a construct is the generally one word answering answer for what you're studying. So for test two, for the short answer, if somebody asks you what the study was about, you might say something like humor and recovery, and those will be the constructs. The operational definition is how you measure those things in that experiment specifically. So for test two example, they would measure humor by having people see a comedian and measured recovery by them having, having them rate a pain scale from one to 10. Um, it looks like most of you are catching on with the big ideas of independent and dependent variables. Um, remember that the independent variables are those that the experiments think of as the cause um, and are typically what is manipulated. The dependent variable is the outcome or the effect. Um, and I just want to note that you should be able to answer questions about the independent and dependent variable in just one word or phrase. If you give me a whole sentence with too much information in it, I'm going to take off points because I can't necessarily tell that you've identified which one of those things you've listed in your sentence are the key points. Um, if we use the extra credit as an example and look at this atheist shoes experiment, um, the atheist shoe company was interested in how labeling on the outside of a package affects delivery. And so they manipulated labeling by either putting atheist branded or neutral tape and measured delivery time and the number of lost packages. So they believe that packaging caused slow delivery time. So the independent variable that they manipulated would be tape and the levels are atheist and neutral. Um, and the dependent variable or outcome would be the time it takes to deliver it. If you're still not clear on these concepts, please go back and review your work from last week from chapter two and let me know if you have questions. These will be really important to have a good grasp on for your final project uh, and also when we get to chapter five and the later chapters. Okay, if we go back to this week's assignments, um, we'll be covering chapter three, which has to do with ethical issues and conducting research. Um, once you've finished reading the chapter uh, and looking at the PowerPoint, <clears throat> I've posted a copy of this article by Brandt uh, that you'll also need to read. Um, your assignment for this chapter will be a series of questions that are based on the Brandt reading. So the assignment is down here. Um, and then of course you'll have your test for chapter three. The other big thing that's happening this week um, is that it's hard to believe, but it's already time to start thinking about your final project. Um, we're going to be working on it throughout the semester, so it's important that you get your topic selected now. Uh, if you haven't already, you should start by reviewing the description of the final project in your syllabus. So, of course, your syllabus is up at the top of the page here, um, right here. So, let me uh, share that screen with you. Okay. So, this is our syllabus, and the description of your final project is down here on the second page of our syllabus. Um, so start by reviewing this description um, to get an overall idea of the project. The general idea is that you're going to select two variables in the social sciences that you expect to be related. You're going to propose a hypothetical study and write up a paper as if you've conducted the study. You do not actually have to conduct it. This is all hypothetical. Um, another thing you'll want to look at, if we go back to our Moodle page, is under the final project information section. This final paper grading rubric looks like uh, this. Um, this is how I'll grade your final paper. Um, and so this will give you details about what I expect in each section. We're not at this point yet, but this is kind of overall what your final product will look like. So it's important to be looking that over as we get through each section. So going back to our Moodle page again, what is due next week or this week is the final project topic and references uh, or research articles worksheet. Um, you're going to download the Word document here and then you're going to submit it down below. So that document looks like this <clears throat> and um, it's really just getting some basic information. What you need to do for this week is pick a general topic and a research question about that topic. So this really can be anything in the field of social sciences, but it needs to be something that you'll be able to 
test through either an experimental or a correlational study. Um, simple is best here. It's going to make the whole project much easier for you. Um, so really this week be thinking about a clear topic um, that, that you can test with a not too complex experiment. Um, if you're struggling for ideas, I'd encourage you to go back to look at your introductory classes. Psychology will probably be the easiest since that's the perspective we're taking this semester. Um, but you could also consider your introductory AJU or sociology top, um, classes. Um, and so think about within those classes, what topics interested you the most? And could you develop a research project based on that? Um, once you have a general topic and a research question, um, you'll need to identify two specific constructs that you plan to investigate. So just to give you an example, in previous semesters, um, we've studied how attractiveness influences people's perceptions of intelligence. So the general topic would be maybe attractiveness, um, and uh, my two constructs would be attractiveness and perceptions of intelligence. Remember that you won't actually have to conduct the study you propose, but you will need to write up the paper as if you've conducted the study. Um, we haven't gone into a great deal of methods yet, but from the information in chapter two, you should be able to start thinking about how you might test this. So in my example, I might suspect that attractive people are perceived as more intelligent. Um, so I could possibly manipulate attractiveness which would mean that attractiveness would be my independent variable and see how it affects perceptions of intelligence. So intelligence would be my dependent variable. Again, you don't have to have these details this week, but you should be starting to think about these things. Finally, the second half of the assignment um, is to look into previous research on your topic and your constructs. Uh, if you're not familiar with finding or saving PDFs articles from EBSCO um, on our Moodle page, if we go back to that, um, in two places I've got this EBSCO basics video um, that walks you through the steps of finding a peer reviewed article. So it's here in this week's assignments. I also have, so you can always go back to it, it under the final project information. So if we go back to this week's assignments, um, what you need to find is two peer-reviewed empirical research papers that are related to your topics, and then you'll need to save them as a PDF and submit them with your topic. I've laid out the details of how you can ensure that your paper meet all of the requirements right here. So it needs to be published in an empirical journal. It needs to be research that was conducted by the authors themselves. Here's some things to look for. Um, it can't be a literature review and you need full text. So this should help you identify the correct articles. And then um, when you go to submit your document or when you go to submit your assignment for this week, um, if we go back to our Moodle page, too far down. Um, if we go back to our Moodle page, you can submit three documents. So you'll attach your Word document as well as the two PDF copies. All right, so that's our announcements for this week. Have a great